Hey there, I'm Aki and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be taking a look at all the biomes in Subnautica. However, since we will be talking about the lore and other endgame stuff here, have this spoiler warning. Also, just quickly before the video begins, I wanted to tell you that I'm now partnered with TorGuard, which means you can get 10% off any purchases on TorGuard.net if you use the link in the description and the promo code ACTUAMBUS. Starting with the first biome you encounter after the crash, the safe shallows, you can probably guess that this is the safest biome. Of course, since this is supposed to be the safest biome, there are no predators around and there is nothing that can kill you except for some defensive gazapods and those pesky little crashfish that like to explode in your face. You don't need to worry about food or water, just catch one of the many fish swimming around or get some coral samples to make bleach and purify water. You can also find a lot of resources in one of the many limestone chunks around here or in some small wrecks originating from the aurora. The next biome you will probably see is the kelp forest. This is also where you will encounter your first predators. The stalk is an aggressive life form attracted to metal and the mesmer will hypnotize you to get you closer and then bite you. You may also encounter bleeders that stick to your arm and have to be cut off. You will find better materials like gold and silver here, as well as bigger wrecks. Like in most other biomes, you will also find unique eggs here. The third biome you will probably encounter are the grassy plateaus. You will find a few new creatures here, for example two predators called Sand Shark and Biter. What you can also find here are a lot of wrecks, many blueprints and a lot of cave systems. Now, one of those cave systems are the Jelly Shroom Caves. You will find crab snakes hiding in those Jelly Shrooms, ready to jump out and attack you. You will also find leftovers from survivors of the previous ship that crashed here, the Degassi. They also had a base on a floating island, which is another biome you will encounter. What you can find here are new sources of food in these planters, for example the marble melon or just random fruits growing on trees, but also carnivores, the cave crawlers, and those are some pesky little creatures. This is also one of the key points in the story, but I don't want to go into too much detail with that. However, there is another island, the mountain island. Here you will find your first alien structure, but also get important materials like diamond, lead and lithium. In the top of the mountain you will find a precursor master teleporter leading to a slave teleporter on the other island. This is also a place where you will encounter your first warpers. These creatures can teleport you even out of your vehicle, so be careful. According to the wiki, the aurora also counts as its own biome and here you can find a lot of supply crates, fragments and story elements. Deeper in the aurora you will also find the Prawn Bay, which is where you can scan exosuit fragments to get your first prawn suit. In the reactor room you will also be able to fix the radiation leak. Other than those normal islands, there are also underwater floating islands. A new predator you will encounter there is the Bone Shark, but you will also find big wrecks and a lot of fragments. In some of the islands, you can also find caves with rare plants. The next biome is the Mushroom Forest. You will encounter the passive ghost rays as well as new types of plants and rare resources like gel sacs. You can also find wrecks in this biome along with a precursor slave teleporter in one of the caves leading to the primary containment facility. Another biome with such a teleporter cache is the Bulb or Kush Zone. And this is where you find a really shocking predator. The Amped Eel. If you're looking to build a base here, you are lucky, since the thermal vents make for a really good power source and you will also find a lot of wrecks. Here you can see the entrance to the Bulb Zone cache.
Deeper down under the floating island, you will find yourself in the blood kelp. Most plants and fish are deep versions of things encountered before, such as the blighter or spinefish. Like in many other biomes, you can find rex here and also blood oil, which is the stuff growing on these blood vines. In the northern blood cap zone, you will also encounter the crab squids, which can disable electricity via an EMP pulse. Blood crawlers also roam in this biome, so be careful. Some other interesting things about this biome are some floating underwater islands in the northern blood kelp, as well as the precursor cache that you can find there. Inside of it you will just find some iron crystals, but you have to watch out since it might be guarded by some warpers. Now the next biome is also below the floating island, the Grand Reef. This is not a fun place to be in with crab squids, warpers and even a ghost leviathan roaming around. Along with new plants and valuable resources, you can also find Rex as well as a Degassi base, in which you can get a cuttlefish egg and an orange tablet. In the deep Grand Reef there is an entrance to the Lost River, which is full of acidic brine and skeletons of extinct and still existing species. Be careful of river prowlers and crab squids, as well as a juvenile ghost leviathan in the bones field. The Lost River has three side caverns. In one of them, you find a destroyed alien research base. Here you can find a lot of eggs, live specimen, which are now dead, as well as some skeletons. This is also where the precursors created the warpers. In the second side cavern, you find the tree cove. Ghost rays swim around the tree and the blue brine is safe and you can search for resources under it. The tree itself grew around ghost leviathan eggs, so let's hope they don't hatch. In the third cave, there is not much going on. This is where the ghost forest is located. And except for a few skeletons, predators and a ghost leviathan, there is not much here. In the Ghost Canyon, you will also find another precursor cache, next to a skeleton of an ancient extinct super predator. Next up is the Sparse Reef, which comes with some new fish and plants. The only dangerous things here are bleeders and the tiger plant. Since that one likes to shoot spikes at you, it's really annoying though. In here, you can also find a precursor cache. The Crackfield is a spiky biome with a few resources and a life pod wreck. However, there is not much else in here. Right next to it are the dunes. In this biome there are many predators and not a lot of fish or plants. There is also reaper leviathans around here which can grab the seamoth and destroy it, so be very careful. You can also find a meteor crash site here with a precursor cache entrance at the side. Around the entire map lies the dead zone, or void. This biome only supports microscopic and leviathan lifeforms, which happen to be ghost leviathans. There are no resources or wrecks here, just infinite empty ocean. And last but not least, the lava zone. In Subnautica's deepest biome, you will encounter new passive lifeforms such as the Crimson Ray and lava versions of other fish. However, there are also warpers and new dangerous predators around here. Lava larvas, for example, are especially annoying since they attach to your vehicles and suck energy out of them until you get out and cut them off. When you're in there with your cyclops and there's like 15 lava larvas attached to it, you are screwed. Another thing you can find down here is Kyanite. This is a really valuable resource used for a lot of endgame stuff. The lava lizard can bury itself in lava and then shoot rocks at its enemies. There's also another leviathan down here. The sea dragon leviathan. 
It roams around the lava castle and can shoot fireballs at you and your vehicles. It is extremely aggressive and extremely dangerous, so try to stay away from it. Inside the lava castle, however, you find the precursor thermal plant. This is where you can get the blue artifact, which opens up the primary containment facility, as well as blueprints for iron technology. You will find the primary containment facility in the active lava zone. In it there are many interesting things such as artifacts, even some from earth, teleporters and even an iron crystal fabricator, but I won't go into much more detail with that. This is also where you encounter the Sea Emperor Leviathan, the creature that can cure the entire planet with Enzyme 42. All creatures in its aquarium are passive, and you will find its eggs as well as a teleporter leading back to the mountain island. And that's already it again. Which of these is your favorite biome? Tell me in the comments below. So thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like. Let's see if we can get 200 likes. And as always, I'll see you next time. Goodbye!